Hello everybody, welcome to the Carl Weezer Show, all your news about Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. Carl, what's going on? Oh, the skin on my body is flaking off. Ah. Hey Kum, what's up? What's happening? Uh, Howdy, pal. So, uh, from, as you can hear from knowing that, yeah. uh, the Carl Weezer news uh, segment will probably be over. It will we, be we'll, cancelled, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Carl Weezer's allegations are simply too grave, we just can't deal no. with this. No, not because he's dying. Every, well, that too, but you know. is. <laughs> It's sort of awkward because it's like we want to be in the hospital support him for the cancer, but it's like Carl, all those, all those children. <laughs> That's what no, we're... you see, his love of llamas just went too far. Yeah, exactly. Like, he he owned he, way he, too he, many. He armed uh, he armed a lot of animals. It, it's like with rock stars in the seventies where they got like mounds of coke. He just got fucking cars driving llamas into his fucking uh, apartment complex everywhere. Yeah, he was making a llama animal preserving. Yeah. Like some rich people do. Like there was this one dude who did like uh, like an uh, like an animal preserve for lions yeah. and tigers, exactly, and other big cat animals, and then made a movie of it. Yeah, called uh, Roar, I think. Is that the one where he gets killed? <laughs> it's a movie where basically he just like like red letter red letter media did a thing about it. Oh, but basically he he got a bunch of actors. Into a house, and there were like actual, real lions and tigers just everywhere. Hmm. Yeah. And a lot of it is uh, um, kind of imp- improvised. Oh yeah. As in the lion attacks and all that is real. <laughs> oh wow. We should watch it someday. It's uh, interesting. It's a very interesting movie. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Yeah. I. <laughs> The one I was thinking of was this one fucking documentary about a guy who befriends one lion. And the entire thing, it's so, from what I remember, it's supposed to be so feel good. And he's like, mm. you know, animals, we can just live with them. And the end is, just, I believe the end of the documentary is somebody finding the fucking, what was it? I don't know. No, no, it was with a bear. He befriended a bear or something. Oh. And at the end, somebody just finds like audio of him being mauled by the bear. And it's, oh. It's just fine. Like, it's really fucked up. It feels it's like, like one of those shimp stories. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't like people being. Yo, I'm going to go out and say this on a limb. I'm sorry. I don't want to harsh you on this bus. I don't like listening or watching people actually be murdered. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Like some other people, for some reason, can do the whole watch people die thing. Yeah. Me, I me I am not that kind of person. Can't be doing that. It it, it uh, just it takes a piece of my soul. I don't know why. I just oh I can't watch that. Yeah, I, I just it's, I don't like it. Mm. Ugh. Fellas, I am uh, as you as you could hear, I'm sipping an epic coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh god, uh, because like I am last not, time. I'm now a coffee addict. I I drink it every single second. I we actually started drinking coffee like no. Afterwards. Actually, last time I drank it was uh, was with the podcast. Okay, but yeah. I really I really like doing it. But there uh, yeah. there was no opportunity for me to do it again. Huh. We just gotta buy coffee. I know. I, I mean, we probably have coffee in the house, but I, I'm stupid. Yeah. I probably make it wrong. Probably pour in a pee pee. And the fucking Carl mm. Weasel coming. like, I have another lot. Carl, fuck off! <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. Fucking <laughs> skating. <laughs> Those were some solid waves. Damn. It's usually me who does that. Yeah. <laughs> I just get so. The long. Okay, no. Love, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I hope he dies. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I've been so waiting for it so guys, long. what's so. happening? Oh, yeah. It's going into the fourth stage now. The cancer, it's not a remission. It's so sad. It really. I, Please I'm, take care of us. <laughs> okay. well, we, won't, we won't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing that now. Go. No. <laughs> You, you can't you can't just expect us to do that. That's the best response to a diver. It's like we won't be doing that now. You <laughs> <laughs> tell my mom I love her. We won't be doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh my god. Mm. Dying wish, dude. If I had a dying wish, I'd be like, hey. If you were a uh, make yeah. a wish kid, yeah. per se. If I, if I was a make a wish kid at 22 years, well, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I wonder how, how, how long do they do make a wish? Oh, it has to be like, I, I don't really know, but I, I would. Maybe it's up to 25 or maybe it's up to 16 or whatever. <laughs> I, I'll be surprised if it goes up to like even eighteen. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna look it up, Kuma. You, you, you guess it, and I'll guess it. My guess. My guess is uh, the limit. I'm actually guessing the limit is like seventeen. Okay, my guess is twenty-five because it's considering that youth or whatever. Okay, here we go. Make a wish. Age cap. Here we go. It's like, I just can't imagine someone older than me, uh, like eighteen. Actually, eighteen. Oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's weird because it's fucked up because like the can- because when you're 25, yeah. you're basically an adult. Yeah. I would say. Apparently, like cancer treatment all that is or like. I don't know, the way you live with cancer is really fucked up when you're, like, in your early 20s because mm. you don't get, like, this treatment of, like, you know, you're a kid with cancer and all that, but you're also not old enough to where you get, like, that shit. So, like, for mm. example, there are, like, stories of, you know, Ed Gould, when he had cancer, like, he oh, had boy. practically nothing to do. Ah. Because they barely gave him anything. He just fucking, I don't know. So, this, is a, this is a sad topic. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a sad topic, but, you know, I just have to get off the llamas, okay? <laughs> Yeah, so, no, we're done with okay. that. We're, we're done. We're done. We're done. This isn't Llama Cast. No. <laughs> uh-uh. I didn't even write that down on sheet, the Llama Cast. One. No. Okay. Oh, we're done. But yeah, uh, sp- uh, speaking of which, uh, we got the um, the return of the topic list. Oh yeah, we, we turned the manic topic list. And I love how you uh, added <laughs> in the big bold letters, don't forget, talk into Mike. I won't forget, love, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm an epic passive aggressive man. <laughs> no. mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, as you can see, the, the topic lists are epic because most of them are scrawled while I'm deeply drunk. They're just like my random thoughts. I'm like, this is the talk about it. That's usually how it goes. And half of them are like written in a way where like I, I wrote it so that I could get it, but nobody else could. So like, mm-hmm. well, I'm guessing, um, you know, let's not talk about the yeah. fucking topic list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. Listen, I'll, once I have a few of them, I want to post them on Twitter because they're kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Listen, <laughs> that's the best topic of all the topic list. <laughs> oh my God. Uh... Oh, Jesus, criminy. Uh, what was I gonna say? I wanted to fucking watch Sailor Moon recently. I was like, really? I need to watch that show. But it's available nowhere. Mm. It don't exist. But, and I, I went want, on... I, I'm yeah. just curious if it's actually any good. I think it is. It's probably... It's, it created a whole magical girl thing. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, from what I've heard... And this is from somebody who I talked to about watching Cardcaptor Sakura, which I'm not going to talk about on every fucking podcast, but uh, <laughs> I, I talked about how I was watching that and they were like, you should probably watch Sailor Moon first because it's basically Cardcaptor Sakura, but less interesting because it was made like 10 years before. So yeah. What a good pitch. Yeah. It's like this one thing you like, but not as yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, but that's why they said I should watch that first because I'll be, whatever, listen. Mm. But I, I don't know if I'm going to watch it because that's 200 fucking episodes. I'm not going to watch Sailor, mm. Sailor Man. Yeah, no. Sorry. If there's any other anime that is kind of in that realm of, like, popular but also long as fuck, that One actually piece. looks kind of interesting to me. Yeah. One Piece looks interesting to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I, 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 I don't want to watch Naruto. One Piece or shit, yeah. I I really don't want to watch Naruto. <laughs> yeah, it seems really stupid. Mm. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know much about those, but I... We watched Dragon Ball. Yeah, we did watch some Dragon Ball. I liked it. Yeah. Up to the point. Neat. Yeah. We, we watched till the end of... I, I think we better have already talked about this, but yeah, to we summarize, didn't. we watched up until the fucking end of the first Saiyan saga, but yeah, I, a little, I don't know. Nah, I was just get, got really annoyed with Go, uh, Gohan at the end. It just felt like all his uh, training was for nothing. <laughs> We're going to battle, and he's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> While throughout the show, he's like been showing himself to be a bit of a badass. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, but <laughs> then it's just like, he just returns the baby. And then that was what Steven Universe was based on, dude. It's like, hey. It does feel that way, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, hey, let's have our fate develop, but then he's annoying also. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. The, the thing, though, I like about Dragon Ball Z more Steven Universe is they kick the shit out of Gohan for no reason. <laughs> like, there's like oh, the yeah, arc yeah. where Piccolo's like, I'm good to teach you. And then he gets. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just like this. Uh, I just like his art style. It's cool, yeah. yeah. And also, I liked. I don't know. I liked the whole uh, the whole deal of it. It was funny. I liked the where it was like last time on Dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah, he is trying to hold down the fort at the Snake River. What the fuck? Snake Bridge. Of course, Snake Bridge. Beautiful. Yeah. Everyone loves the Snake Bridge. We already talked about the Snake Bridge. It is not abridged. Let me tell you that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my. But God. I kind of like it though. Yeah, I love it. I love the Snake Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's just like this li- little thing that's just like, oh, it, it's just like such a, how you call it, riding MacGuffin. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, we need, uh, we need, like, fucking <laughs> Goku we, to do yeah. something while he's dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's have him run on a fucking road. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, that's not a spoiler. It happens in, like, the first two episodes. He d- right, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Okay, yeah. Um, I was going to say, Kumbo, let me mm-hmm. ask you. 
What what what's a memorable moment in school of you skipping school? What what's your favorite time you ever skipped school? <laughs> uh oh, it's, it's just embarrassing. Is that through llamas? No. Yeah. Well, the most memorable one would be the one where um I skipped school because I was like, it's a nice day. I'd rather go wa- go for a walk around the lake. That one ain't even embarrassing. That one's fucking boss. You were just like, bro, I got better shit to do than you fucking idiots. Well, it's embarrassing you because my mom yelled at me when I... Afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's a, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was fucking... This the thing. is, I, I skipped school quite a bit in yeah. like, um, was it 6th or 5th grade? Yeah. Somewhere around then. But that was like... Um, that was before I was even medicated. Yeah. For the ADD thing. Yes. So I was just kind of like uh, a bit of a I don't care. But it was spans. <laughs> oh yeah. Mo- most of my school skipping was in fucking ninth grade when I was so checked out and oh, I just yeah. I, I hated everything. And so mm. th- some of the times I one of the times I skipped school in ninth grade was when uh, it's in early 2014 when they had this bizarre offer in the fucking video store. Which yeah, it was a video store at the time mm. where. Uh, they they were releasing the final box set of Breaking Bad, oh. finally on DVD, but they had this offer where if you came in early enough, you could get it for one crown. What? Also known as 10 cents, just about. That is super cheap. Yeah. and That's uh, as cheap as it comes in this country. Yeah, it's, stu- it's stupefying. But yeah, I was like, bro, I'm going to do that. Uh, but <laughs> and so I skipped school, but I didn't get there in time anyways. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. So yeah. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, there was not never a moment where either of, either of us skipped school to do anything cool. Actually, what the, technically what? there is for yeah. me. Um, okay, and this is gonna lead into another thing. Yeah. Um, so last time, well, actually no, not last time. Last last time, I talked about uh, Sweden Rock Festival, mm. and um, right around the time where um, we were go- uh, where it basically around the time. Where we were going to go to that, me, my dad, and his uh, girlfriend. Um, I was uh, having like a uh, basically, uh, bas- basically like the 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 end of the uh, second year of uh, high school. Yeah, and we were supposed to do this thing where we basically all get together, like go to the local church. Yeah, you know, a little bit like a send off goodbye. You know, uh, have a nice summer break. We oh, had yeah, a fucking church send off. That was weird. I skipped that yeah. to go to Sw- the Sweden Rock Festival a day earlier. Oh, that's cool. With them. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking baller. And I, I felt real good about that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, oh. But people were like, when we were there, were like, aren't you supposed to be, like, doing a thing? Yeah. <laughs> because my kid is uh, doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, maybe I am, but uh, I don't care. Yeah. Like we just like, I mean, it wasn't like the the graduation of high. It wasn't like a high school yeah. graduation. It was just like the end of the second year. Yeah, thing. exactly. So I was like, "Fuck this stinky old shit." Yeah. Fucking yeah. I. Uh, it's funny. Actually, I believe around that exact time after you got back from Sweden, you you talked about that on really old ass podcast that was pretty bad. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was bizarre. How that was a long time ago. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was like those. Uh, shitty episodes of me and uh, Stranger Skeletons where I was not uh, a confident man in what I talked about. Those were, it was an interesting time. Uh, it's trash. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But yeah, no, I guess I did talk about it a little bit there, but... I don't... Yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I don't think I talked about anything much interesting. Yeah, definitely I didn't not. talk about this very interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, my first time moshing. Yeah. This... Uh, do, and the first band that I got to mosh to was Anthrax. Oh. Yeah. And that's fucking amazing because, you know, they got the song Call in a Mosh. Yeah. And oh boy, it was fun. Hmm. So, uh, like, basically, yeah, no, it's just like, I think I was standing in the crowd, just kind of like looking around like, okay, where's the, where's the circle pit? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. And then I found it. I was like, right, let's do, let's do this. And I jumped in. And you know, it went pretty fucking smoothly, I will say. It actually went pretty fucking smoothly. Mm. I was expecting it not to, sort of. Yeah. But no, it went really smoothly because I think I talked about Martian before. Yeah. Where it's basically like, yeah, you're like slamming into each other and, you know, running around in a circle. 
But also, if you were to get net knocked down, yeah. which I did, I you get picked up instantaneously. By oh someone. yeah, yeah. Like, and I've had moments too where I like as soon as I see someone go on the floor, I just like yeah, stop everything. Just like whoop, yeah, up you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's no, fun, fun time. And uh, you know what's so funny? Like some guy that we know that we knew in like um, ninth grade. Oh yeah, he was there. Yeah, <laughs> it was like oh, what's up, dude? <laughs> And we were marching together. Yeah. And then I, I just remember this one fucking moment where it was like almost as if the fucking marsh split because this giant fucking dude, like giant muscly dude <laughs> with like no shirt and like white camel pants stepped into the fucking uh, circle. Yeah. And everyone was like, let's fucking go. Oh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> He fucking alpha them. <laughs> just going. No, it's just like so funny. It's just it's so fun when someone like big just walks into the pit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just be like, oh fuck, <laughs> oh freaking dosh. Yeah, Damn. but it was cool. Yeah, mm. that actually that reminds me. I uh, I I. Oh, wait, I'm not done. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so after the marsh, yeah, is the most memorable part. After the marshing and the Afrax were done, yeah, you know, everyone was uh, going after their own thing. Um, this same year. Sweden Rock was doing a special thing, where the stage where Afrax was playing was a stage that's normally called the Rock Stage. Yeah. This year, because this was 2016, it was called the Lemmy Stage. Oh, yeah. In uh, honor of Lemmy, because he passed on, uh, you know, the year before. Yes. And um, what they did after Afrax played was have, like, on their big monitors, basically playing, like, a Motorhead concert. Oh. (laughs) And... You know, I've been to Motorhead. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've, uh, I've seen them before uh, that happened. But, man, that was louder than anything ever. Oh, man. Dude, because I was, like, really tired and, like, knocked out after moshing, it was as if there was a fucking helicopter next to me, man. Yeah. While they were playing, like, they had, like, overkill or something. Yeah. Seriously, it just sounded like, like... Yeah. <laughs> like, it was insane. It was like an out-of-body experience. I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Standing <funny>. there. <laughs> and, like, watching, like... Um, it was also as if my bl- my vision was blurry and I was just, like, watching people who were still there, like, marching to this uh, Motorhead thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, god damn, what an experience. That is fucking... Yeah. That's fucking wild. I, uh, I, I realized something recently mm? that I have never actually talked about, um, most of my concert experiences I've ever had. Mm? I basically never even brought them up, which is oh. bizarre because I don't know. I have a few good ones. Uh, oh, you should talk about them. Yeah. Concerts are an interesting thing. Yeah. The first big one, because there's, there, there are a few before, but they're like not inconsequential. The, oh, yeah. the first big one that I was really cool was <laughs> for some reason in 2016, Fucking Deep Purple, we're going to do a a free concert at our uh, at our uh, country's most uh, famous uh, theme park. It's called Lisa Barry. Oh it's yeah, fucking, yeah. It's in Gothenburg. Yeah, exactly. And the, yeah, they were going to do a fucking free concert there. And basically, all you had to do was pay admission to go into the theme park, mm. and you could just go and watch the concert. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. My brothers were just like, hey, let's do that. And I was like, yeah, let's fucking do that. And so we drove like 800 million miles to get to fucking Gothenburg. And, and I, like, also, I, I believe I had my shitty old fucking playlist blasting in the car. And mm-hmm. they were perplexed. I believe a Primus song came on, a later one. Uh, if anyone's heard it, Extinction Burst. That one's fucking strange. And they're like, your music fucking sucks. Really? Yeah, I thought your brothers were also no, into like some no, of that music. No, uh, my, one of my brothers liked it, the other one didn't. But nah. whatever, whatever. We got the fucking, the stupid thing. And we got CD Purple. Mm-hmm. And my favorite uh, thing they played, which... Do you ever have an experience of going to a concert and they play a bunch of songs you haven't heard, but then once they've played them, you listen to them and you're like, you appreciate them way more. And you're like, wow. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think so, yeah. There's one Deep Purple song they played that's now probably my... F- well, one of my favorite ones, but th- I hadn't heard it at the time. It was fucking Lazy. If anyone's heard Lazy, I love that song and the way it's structured. Uh. It's really cool. Uh, and uh, 
I it was I, I liked it, and it had uh, the fucking guy who was playing a keyboard. I believe I believe he was original member, and he uh, was wearing a minion shirt. What? <laughs> Oh, fuck. I don't know why he was wearing a minion shirt, but you know, and that Ian Gillen was sounding pretty epic. I gotta be honest. I remember I saw at Sweden Rock last year. Yeah. Uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Yeah. And Richie Blackmore looking kind of disinterested. Yeah. That. And also fi- uh, me finding it kind of like, mm, to call it Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Yeah. That's- because yes, he is a big part of it. But let's be honest. When you think of Rainbow, you think of Dio. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's well, yeah. And maybe, maybe that's I don't know. Maybe that's why he's calling it Richie Ma- Blackmore's Rainbow because it yeah. isn't the Rainbow. I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, he, he if if he seemed disinterested, then maybe yeah, it is kind of a weird cash grab. But yeah. that tends to happen with bands where they're like they, they there's a split where two either it's two halves of the band or it's one person and everyone else. Oh, do you know what the worst yeah? one for me is? Yeah. Um, I Richie Ramone. Oh, oh! He goes around. <laughs> You know, sh- going shows with like the name Richie Ramone. He was yeah. never even an original member. Yeah, I can understand Marco Ramone because he joined like pretty, you know, early on. Yeah, but Richie Ramone, really? <laughs> That's a little like mm. so oh, weird. Uh, that feels a little cash grabby. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't feel right with me. Speaking of cash grabby, ladies and gentlemen, mm? let me fucking tell y'all a tale. Mm? A tale about why region locking fucking sucks. Uh. And there's many reasons to hate region locking. I'm sure y'all do, because y'all, y'all, we, you play your Japanese games, you say, wow, I love to play my funny little porn game. They're no, just kidding. Okay, so, <laughs> you all, okay. <laughs> so, my instance of region locking, it made me pissed. Mm. It made me pissed. So, yesterday, uh, for the last, oh, three or four years, uh, you know, I've heard rumblings of this documentary that was being made, mm? and it was this really, like, well-crafted, like, like high-profile, like, just beautifully made documentary about Frank Zappa. They were oh. finally going to make one that was actually high-profile, really well done, that documented everything. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, uh... Uh, what's it called? And it was, it was like really cool because the person who was making it was like he had gotten access to all his fucking vaults because Ooh. Frank Zappa was deeply autistic and <laughs> recorded everything and saved everything, much like me. Oh. And so, like, there's so much fucking strange footage. But yeah. And I was looking forward to that for so long. And this year it was finally going to be released. It's like, whoa, that's cool. And it was being fucking played at a bunch of film festivals or whatever. But then they announced the final dates, like, it's going to come to all the streaming services and shit, November 27th. And I was like, I'm fucking hyped. I want to get, I'm going to get it. Mm. Then yesterday, time came around, I, I, I went out of sight. Don't exist nowhere. You know why? Because mm. I live in the fucking Europe. Yeah. I, ha- I have the misfortune of li- living in the sweatland where I can't, can't even watch it. Yeah. So I, I looked on every single goddamn, like, I literally, I exhausted so many options. I went on every single possible streaming service where I could fucking pay for it or whatever. Didn't exist. I went to every single torrenting site I possibly could find. Mm-hmm. It didn't exist yet. It wasn't on there. Uh-huh. I literally bought a VPN. <laughs> and then I finally, the way I had to do it was I bought the VPN. I got somebody to send me a YouTube link of it. And then I rented it there. Mm. And that's how I finally saw it. Bah. And that's why region locking fucking sucks. I had a similar experience. Which because one? there were, like, a similar experience where in, they were talking about, like, we're gonna do this uh, punk documentary series. Yeah. On this one streaming d- uh, site that Ooh. you can't use in Europe. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. And they, it was one where they got, like, a fuck ton of people to interview. Yeah. You know, I actually caught some of it on uh, YouTube. Mm. But yeah, they did one for, uh, like, the the one that I find the most interesting era of punk being the late 70s and 80s American hardcore punk thing. And yeah, no, they got, like, a bunch of people mm. for that. I think they got, they also got Keith Morris. Yeah. I think they got Henry Rollins. Yellow Briafra was absolutely there. Yeah. And yeah, yes, like, and they, they talked about stuff, bands that uh, I f- was like, yes, thank you for mentioning this. Like, they had a dedicated session to the germs, kind of. Oh. It's like, oh, thank you. Yes. 
Yeah, no, so I was a little... So gl I'm, I'm glad I got to watch some of it mm. on the YouTube, but I was a little bummed out that it was on a region locked thing. Yeah. Mm. It's fu Here's the thing with fucking region locking. I'm sure you could have probably slinged that shit back in the day when there wasn't internet because nobody knew about anything. But, like, mm. who are you kidding at this point? What the fuck? Everybody knows, like, that something is there. It's like, what the fuck? When everyone needs <laughs> to use a fucking VPN to yeah. watch something, it feels meaningless yeah. to even do that. Exactly. Fucking... Let me give you my disgusting grody fun bucks. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, the fuck was I saying? Oh yeah, and uh, oh yeah, and I, <laughs> I guess you probably talk about documentaries and I watched it on the day it came out. Mm. That documentary was pretty damn good. I liked it because uh, it had weird footage. It had uh, the the most surprising footage to me is how much footage there is from the fucking fifties mm. of him as a teenager just fucking around. Wow. Oh. There's a bunch of footage of Captain Beefheart. Wow. <laughs> Looking like Josuke Higashi. Yeah, Kata. yeah, I saw your tweet about that. Like, exactly, yeah. Mm. I, don't, I don't know about that. That's one of those cases where it's like, maybe that was intentional. Yeah, no. M uh, I, maybe, that's why I'm saying maybe. Yeah. A I, hard maybe. It, it, it Just knowing how he's like, the, all the music references. No, it, it would have been impossible because, first of all, that footage did not exist before nah. this documentary. And also, it was like, I think, I think Josuke specifically was actually based off the, uh, what's it called? It's uh, rude boys in Japan, not rude boys, whatever, the fucking... The I think I know boys. what you're talking about, yeah. like, they had the crazy <laughs> big hair and all that. Yeah, whatever. Whatever yeah. the fuck. Like, like, kind of like Japanese greasers in a way. Yeah. Greasy. Okay. Mm. Oh, fuck it. Uh, what the heck was I gonna say? Uh, uh, internet drama. <laughs> why do people, why do people give a fuck about... Other people's b bullshit. Like, why? Why the fuck? Well, there are some people yeah. who do it, uh, you know, to make a buck off of them. Yeah, I mean, definitely. But you like, know, the scumbags like Keemstar. Yeah, like I just here, here's one thing I don't understand: people who are obsessed with like internet people's relationships, where they're just like, "Oh, dude, he's a cuck, dude. He's like his girlfriend did this thing." It's like, I, what, what it, the fuck is your problem? <laughs> these are the kind of people who like. Should be reading these fucking paparazzi magazines. Yeah, exactly. Because they're tailored to them. They, they they are no fucking better than those. They're fucking no fucking people. better. Yeah, and they're just I don't know. It's like I can't. And and they're they're also the ones who are like, oh look at these cucks, these sims. It's like you are the biggest fucking cuck slash simp in the universe because you're the one fucking hanging on to other people's relationships. Like look at it. It's like what the fuck? What are you doing? Like it's just you're a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Find, find a hobby. <laughs> You're a rapper. You're a lady. You two middle fingers in the air. <laughs> I don't want to be. I'm a shitty... Okay, I'm nah, It's just like, I, I can I couldn't care fucking less. Yeah. About the internet drama, about people I don't give a fuck about. Yeah. It's like, it was this weird little era in like, what was it? 2015, 2016? Yeah, when, when it was a big... Yeah. But now, it's just like... I, I don't give a fuck about any of these people. The most unholy thing for internet drama is that I've found... That still, to this day, there are people who who use the exact format of Leafy is here and have like got like they're like the forebears of uh, well not the forebears they're they're the fucking they're the predecessors of Leafy is here and it's the most fucking oh god it's the most cancerous development on YouTube. That is embarrassing. It really is. They they literally talk over like this fucking footage of like some FPS and they're like. Hello, gay I never gay understood gay. the appeal of that at all. I, I don't, uh, yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Oh. The only drama I'll follow is fucking Carl Weezer has too many fucking llamas drama, because that's, uh, I can take llama drama, but not nothing else. Well, that's because we're fucking in yeah. involuntarily we're involved. Uh, involved. Hey guys, who's talking about me? Carl, go back to your fucking hospital bed. Ah, oh, they, they pull out the IV, they say I'm gonna die in 10 minutes. Cool. Okay. That's your problem. Yeah. Exactly. The fuck did I write there? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Cool. Well, what what have you been doing in the last few days? <laughs> Want to take a wild guess? Uh, have you been drawing things? Have you been making a comic? Yes. Wow, that's fucking insane. Yeah. Cool. Well, how many potatoes have you made in the last two days? <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, yeah, truth be told, I kind of sustain on these fucking, like, um, oven, uh, baked, like, oh, oven uh, potato, uh, like, potato yeah. vidges, yeah. and, uh, schnitzel. Yeah, those are delicious. <laughs> yeah, th that's, like, my go-to meal. <laughs> yeah, the link of... So, yeah, uh, uh, a lot of potato. 
Hello, potato. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's a potato cast. Uh, Fucking hell. I don't know. I, I, I'm not gonna, of course, say much about the comic because it's like really early stages. I'm yeah. just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the sketch stage of it. Oh. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I go hard on the put up or shut up thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm not the kind of guy who, you, you will never hear me going like, get excited for this, get like, ooh, I'm going to do this and that and that. No. no. It's like, Same. either it co- it's going to come out or it doesn't. But it Kumo. usually does come out. Kumo, you need to start making memes on your Twitter where you're like, dude, thinking about OCs, drawing OCs. You need to start making memes like I that. I despise those. <laughs> It's just a celebration of uh, laziness, yeah. and just like trying to find some sort of like justification in your own like lack of putting effort into thing you want to put effort into. Yeah. If, uh, like I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, instead of making that fucking meme, maybe uh, what's actually gonna get you to making what you want to make. Is actually making it. Yeah, think about that one. Think about that one and uh, bite the fucking bullet, you you coward. Oh damn. Hmm. Yeah, I. It's so it's such. No shit, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Do you think Do you think I have it easy? No. Yeah. It's I don't know. It I. It, it I just it's such like uh, this is like such fucking overused advice that everyone says, but it it really just is true. It's like why why don't people just do it? It's like what? no, seriously, it's just like that is the most thing the, the, that is basically it yeah just do it <laughs> yeah it's like what's the f- but also just like i would say generally okay of course doing it yeah. actually getting onto it but also like like making a plan yeah you know like some sort of like um schedule like like, like set a deadline you know yeah. and try to follow it and also don't be afraid to fail yeah, that's another thing. You're gonna fail. Yeah, All no, time. seriously. Yeah. There were many moments, like even with Lost Marble Blue, where I felt like I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Where, but at the same time, oh shit, I'm actually getting content out anyway. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's not uh, what I envisioned from the beginning. It's not perfect in my sense, but it's something. It's a fuck. And that's better, thing. always better than fucking nothing at all. I think. Mm. It's true, buddy. Listen. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I mean, yeah, another thing is just like, yeah, it's, it's gonna look bad at first, whatever you're doing. But the more you do it, the better it gets. Yeah. Just look at like any fucking show, literally any cartoon show in the beginning. And then look at how it looks later. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, I was gonna say Simpsons as an example, but... Well, th- now it looks bad for other reasons. Well, I mean... But what I mean is, like... It, it looked better later after, like, yeah. seven seasons or whatever. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's just, like, yeah. visually, yeah, once you get more of a... You're, you're just gonna get more of a sense of how it's actually gonna look. Yeah. 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 And more, so, more of a sense of how it's actually, like, what this is gonna be. Yeah. Like, it's very rare anyone really knows that from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, with whatever they're doing. I'm gonna... Here we go. Like, for example, I haven't fully realized what my thing, Lost Moral Blue is, but I think I'm going to realize that, um, you know, uh, more along the lines, you know, a little more, a couple more comics in. Yeah. Another thing. I've also um, accepted the fact that, yeah, uh, maybe I don't get a fuckload of readers on these two short little comics that I made. And it's gonna take some time, it takes some doing, and a couple more comics until, you know, it's for sure that, you know, people are gonna be interested. Yeah. You gotta have something to show for, you know? You can't just expect everyone to give a fuck with, like, one yeah. short story. Always fucking put yourself in the fucking shoes of the person who is looking at the thing you're making. Yeah. It's like, always think about, like, like how, would I watch this or would I read this? Would I, whatever. And that's specifically why I was so fu- I've been so like annoyed at like audio quality recently because I'm like, if I heard something with mm. audio quality that bad, I just wouldn't fucking watch it. So that's why. Listen, mm. listen. Yeah, but that, that's that's my that's actually my main advice for making shit online. And, like, if you're making shit for yourself, like if if you're not posting anything online, then who cares? Do whatever you want. But if you're going to post things online, you really want to like get shit going. It's like 
always think about what the person looking at it would would be like thinking when they're looking at it. Yeah, there's a great quote by Jamie Hewitt actually. Yeah. Is um, cr- uh, don't just basically it's like don't just um, create things that inspire you, but create things that excite you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like don't just do things that um, just like don't just do things that you think. It's like what your inspirations would do. Yeah. Do things that you would want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know. Same. Do that. You know. Do that, everybody. Just, just, just enjoy what you do. <laughs> and don't get llamas. That too. Don't get that one. Fucking. Uh. It's so hard to talk about like advice shit without, uh, for me, without sounding super like uh, an Preachy. insane. What? Preachy. Yeah, and uh. also not sound like a rambling madman. Yeah. But but do I hope people realize I do it with best intentions? Yeah. Because I want I want I, I want oh my god, this art community, <laughs> for the love of God, if this gonna be, if something is gonna come of it, please God let it be fucking passion projects coming to fruition and not just bandwagons and memes. <laughs> Funny man. Why do I care? Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Here's 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 my advice. If you're gonna make something, and if you if you're gonna make meme, only make Dunkin' Chino memes. That's the only thing. You, make that. Thank you. Okay. Whatever. Uh, what the fuck. I lost things to talk about. But it's not on there. Oh. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid, Kumbo. Uh, so am I. Failed. I have failed as a person. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. There's a project I've been doing recently. Well, it's, it's very on and off, but it's something somebody recommended I do, and it's basically, I'm just making a fucking, a soundtrack to a fucking video game that doesn't exist. Oh. So I'm gonna do, release that at some point. I, I made very little of it, but it, I'm gonna do that, <laughs> it's, it's a sneaky thing for me to be like, hey, people, please let me do the music for your games, I wanna do it. Ah, okay. But also, I just wanna do it. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like a fun thing to do for practice what reasons. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty good meme. Oh. Really? Oh. Fucking hell, Kumbo. Fucking hell. God. Uh. What is the time, actually? The time is 37 minutes. Oh, okay, good. Well, why don't we, why don't we move right along? To funny little music talk. Yes. Kumble, what 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 mu- musical waves have you been absorbing? Fuck sakes, I had something. Hmm. And you can't talk about Dunkachino again. Love, that's your you're you're the one who talks about that. Fuck you. Ah, <laughs> oh, let me think. I don't really have anything, any new releases to recommend. Hmm. Mm. Oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna... Oh, man. Can you, uh, can you recommend something first, so I can think? Yes. Hold on. I'm gonna take a big epic swing of my coffee. Everybody, get hyped, get hyped! Get hyped! Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna talk about... Tempest by Bob Dylan. I'm gonna talk about that album. Oh. Because that, uh... That album right there is fascinating in many ways. Um, it's an album made in 2012. Uh, I believe he made it when he was 70 years old. And it it was for the longest time the last album people thought he ever... Last studio album people thought he ever would make. Uh, and it's... Uh, the thing I like... Uh, that I've always liked about Bob Dylan stuff is the fact that he fucking puts like 200% into that every single fucking performance. Like, you, you're gonna feel that he gives way too much of a fuck about every single thing he's performing on. Mm. And like, so does the band. Like, it's really like... When there's a Bob Dylan banger, like, you can fucking feel it. They're like, they're trying to destroy the fucking world with their <laughs> shit, but... Uh, and hearing a fucking 70-year-old, like, singing that intensively... And a 70-year-old at that, who has, like, this broken-ass fucking voice... It honestly... It... It's really, like, a unique thing I've never heard on any other album. Like, if, for example... Uh, it, it's a very dark album, this mm. Tempest album. Like, it has very dark themes. There's a song called Pay in Blood, and oh. it's this weird thing where, like, the instrumental almost comes across as a little bit of, like, 
s funk slash disco esque, but it's just him like fucking screaming over it, which is <laughs> Bob Dylan. I don't know if he's necessarily a screaming type as much as Tom Waits, but he like it. it, it like the the performance he gives on that is like it's such contrast with the smooth instrumental going on. It's like what was it? Uh I don't know. There, there's some great lines on it. Like there's like the. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can do an impression of him because honestly, like Tom Waits is easier to do an impression of, but Bob Dylan at that stage ruined his voice in such a unique way that I honestly, hmm. it's like, is this another angry beggar? What was it? No, no, wait, no. What the fuck? What does he say? It's like another politician pumping out the piss. It's just another angry beggar. Bob was blowing you a kiss, and he's like, and the, the main thing of the song is just him going, well, I pay in blood, but not my own. <laughs> Thank you. It's God damn. Beautiful. Everybody, you listen to Pay and Blood from Temp. Also, Early Roman Kings. That song is fucking awesome. It's like the regular, like, 4 4 blues format, but, like, with, with a bunch of weird, like, instruments. It's cool. Shit. <laughs> Every song from Bob Dylan's, like, catalog feels like a fucking, like, a, like, weird gangster movie in itself. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Uh. Okay, talk about your living tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh. Anyway, I, I know. You know, I'm gonna talk about Tim Timebomb and Friends. Ooh. So, Tim oh. Armstrong of Rancid. Um, I don't remember the year. But at some point, he did a thing where, essentially, he would, um, like, release uh, a cover or of uh, either a Rancid song or some other song or, like, just some original song. Like hmm. once a day. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hmm. And it was all it was very like um a lot of it was very acoustic and yeah. kind of like uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Acoustic and not like with a not, not exactly like a bunch of um high production. Hmm. It was kinda of laid back in a way. And uh, another thing is um yeah, no, like, on Spotify, uh, every song there is, like, uh, there's an album that is just uh, Tim Time of Friends, but also all the other songs are, like, singles, and they all have, like, their like their own artwork made by him <laughs> oh. as uh, covers, and I, lo I love those drawings. They're pretty cool. But yeah, th that is one of those things. Uh, Tim Time Bomb and Friends is, like, oh, perfect thing to just put on when I, like... Kind of like wrapping up the day. You yeah. just want to listen to some uh, acoustic covers of old punk songs, old rancid songs, and just like country blues and like uh, old rock and roll stuff and mm. folk music. And it's really, really fucking good. That sounds pretty neat. Yeah, I think you'd be into it. Yeah. Actually. Bro, this is that shit. Timmy Time Bomb Time. That one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he has. Uh, he, he he has one of the songs is called Ooh La La, oh, which is basically about um, it's basically there's a lot of songs about you know his uh, you know he, he he's had some women uh, you know uh, trouble with women yeah uh, screwing him over oh damn in certain cases and there's a lot of songs about heartbreak and all that damn and that that song is also about that but oh. there's this great line in it that is basically kind of like the chorus where it's like. I wish I knew what I know now when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Some pretty real shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'll, I'll fucking play you yeah. that song in particular. He's got a music video for it and everything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. It's a lot of good shit. Good shit. Though. Oh, wait, no. I know exactly what we should talk about. Huh. We should talk about Tim Timebomb's Rock and Roll Theater. Oh, yeah, we watched that one. Yes. Yeah. Basically, uh, Tim Armstrong made this, like... Um, Musical short movie uh, starring Lars Fredrickson of Rancid as this, like, really fucking evil, like, uh, businessman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who dies and goes to hell. Yeah. And, oh, it's just fucking great, ain't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's real fun. It has, some, it has like, very, uh, I like the little cheesy production values of it. It's very fun. It feels yeah. very, uh... A little, a little f goofy, a little fun. Yeah, it's like, it's like it feels like a musical, like a, yeah. as it says, it's a rock and roll theater. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, <laughs> it's even got some animations in it. Yeah, stuff like that. 
I like those. It's an interesting watch, definitely. Yeah. They got some great songs in it. Like, uh, there are so many misconceptions of hell. <laughs> that one's great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, well, I'm gonna talk about... Let's see here. I'm gonna talk about... Uh, hmm. I'm trying to pick which one would probably be the best one to talk about. Hmm. Oh. Oh. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'll talk about Lumpy Gravy, by for example. Oh. I'll talk about that album. Uh, Lumpy, Lumpy Gravy sounds like a Primus title. Yeah, it really is what inspired a lot of that. It, it is such an unappealing title, and it's the title for, like, okay. Lumpy Gravy by Frank Zappa is probably the most impenetrable work he ever made. Like, this is the kind of shit that, like... Like, even... I'm in a Discord server with Zappa fans, and half of them don't even like it, but <laughs> it's one of my favorite albums he ever made. Wow. Because, well, okay, the, the ones who don't like it, they sort of respect it, but I don't know if they... Whatever. It's, uh. it's this fascinating project where, in 1967, he fucking... He was commissioned to do, like, some... Uh, it's called to do like some orchestra music or something uh, because he like he was a tr- true ass composer mm. and oh wait no he paid for whatever who fucking knows but uh, and he so he composed like what was it 20 25 minutes of like this uh, orchestra music with a giant fucking orchestra and the thing I gotta say uh, Frank Zappa's orchestration shit is like the only like true orchestra music that I f- that I love listening to because it's so weird and f- like fascinating the way he writes because like sometimes it's just this really like triumphant cool like melody shit where it's like it's just like uh, a really good song and sometimes it's these eerie like fucking cacophonies of all the instruments sl- slowly working against each other and not harmon. I don't know and sometimes it's just like he'll fucking I don't know very angular writing but after he wrote all his instrument orchestral music, like he then took that, chopped it up into like a bunch of like 30 second pieces or like one minute or two minutes or whatever, and he edited together this mishmash where it's bits of the orchestra music with like random recordings of them playing as a rock band, uh, recordings of random people talking, sound effects, like fucking these t- horrifying like tornadoes of noise going on wow. and like it's it is one of the most mesmerizing experiences i've ever heard because like it like it, there there's several different parts to it another part was that he recorded like he set up this thing in a recording studio where he just got a bunch of random people from off the streets to come in and say a bunch of random lines and it, it sounds a lot like the lines in David Lynch's Rabbits, <laughs> but except they're, I don't know, slightly stranger. And mm. the, like, the, that, I, let me tell you, Lumpy Greer or Frank Zappa is actually one of the first albums I heard by him. What? And it almost, it, it was one of those things where like, it almost turned me off immediately because I was like, holy shit. Oh. The, I love the way the album begins because uh, the way the album begins, it's like, it begins with this little soundbite of a guy going, was it? Fuck, why don't I know the quote? It's like, uh, I'm telling you, Barry, this is gonna be a dynamite show. And then it cuts to, like, fucking this really cool, like, western ass, like, uh, rock instrumental thing. Mm. It sounds like a weird western thing, like spaghetti shit. Mm. Then it slowly just transitions into this, like, very weirdly pretty, like, you know, orchestral thing. It's like, okay, this is all, like, music and all that. And then after, like, one minute of the orchestra ring, it just fucking cuts into this, like, tornado of noise, like, weird baby sound fucking shrieking. And it's like, it just falls apart so mm. fast. It was referenced on Only Plays, actually. What? Yeah, Ding Dong, Ding Dong said, uh, I believe in, in Just, he said, my fear Frank Zappa song is the one with the weird baby noises. <laughs> <sighs> So, I would highly recommend everyone listen to Lumpy Gravy Part 1. I fucking love, like, songs that have, like, this slow, like, kind of, like, yeah. calm intro, and then just, like, BAM! Yeah. <laughs> that would be, like, uh, from Pink Floyd's The Wall. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Can't it's, remember which one. Uh, it's the first song in yeah. the flesh. Yeah. And it, except, honestly, with Frank Zappa, it's far more frightening and abrupt, because yeah. it's literally just a cut, like... It really, the whole album reminds me of the way, like, uh, experimental hip-hop would sound in, like, the 2010s, where, mm. like, I don't know, it's, 
wildly fucking um innovative. Mm. But yeah. It's just play yeah. Thank yeah, you. It Everybody looking good. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. That was the Llama cast. Everybody, please wish Carl Weezer a fast death. A sl- I don't know. D- no, a slow one. Slow slow death. Ah, did y'all talk about my slow death? Yeah, we did. Fuck off. Ah, okay. And I put him I don't give a hospi- fuck. Put- I'll, I'll, I'll say to his face. Yeah. What's he gonna do? Yeah, I put I put in a hospital beep right here. Dead. Dead is 42. Carl Weezer. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, See you uh, later. Uh, bye. Bambi. Bye!